Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Rachel and I am knitting. Not right now, but most of the time. And I am going to be doing some machine knitting today. So if you've been watching my videos or following me on Instagram, you may be familiar with the upcoming Cabin Collection. The Cabin Collection is a collaboration between myself and Kat and Penny Strickland of Cesium Yarn. They hand dye beautiful yarn in Roanoke, Virginia, and we're partnering to bring the Cabin Collection to you. The Cabin Collection is inspired by my family cabin that I hold near and dear to my heart. So I'm really, really excited to share this wonderful, magical place with all of you in yarn form. So today I want to make myself some cabin socks. I have a small little pumpkin that I cranked a few days ago out of the colorway Crafts Nook, which is a creamy base color with splashes and speckles of orange, yellow, and olive green. It's a really fun, beautiful autumnal colorway. So I'm gonna make myself a pair of socks with craft nook and i'm also hoping that i can make a pair of socks with game cabinet this is another beautiful variegated skein there's tones of blush there's blue in there green a lot going on to make a really beautiful skein so i think both of these will crank up really nicely into socks so that's what I'm gonna do. I have a tracing of my foot, so I know my target measurements. So the first thing that I'm going to do is check gauge. And since I already have craft nook wound onto a cone, it'll be no sweat and really quick to do that. So let's head over to the cranking station and get started. All right, now that I'm at my cranking station, I'm just gonna take off my prime box cranking station cover. Maybe one day I will invest in an official machine cover, but um, for now I just kind of like using a stupid little box. So works for me and that's what I'm doing. You probably have a box around your house somewhere that you could use for a machine cover if you need it. Anyway, now I'm taking the waste yarn off of the setup bonnet that I left on there from the last time I used it. So I guess I didn't fully clean up after myself, whatever. But winding that up really quickly, the next thing I'm going to do is spray the machine with dry lube. And I'm going to start talking about this before I actually do it because I have a lot to say and it's going to take a minute. Basically, I hate the brand of dry lube that I have been using on my circular sock machine. I bought it with you a couple videos ago, I would say a month or two ago, and it is just uh, atrocious. I hate it. It leaves this gross residue on my machine and on the needles and I am going to return this to the store. I have a full unopened, untouched, unused bottle that I bought um, with the same bottle you just saw me use. I bought two when I uh, purchased them and I will not be using the second bottle. So I still have my receipt. I am going straight back to Lowe's when I get the courage to leave the house next and I'm returning it because it's awful. Um, sorry to the owners of Blaster Dry Lube. Uh, I hope you don't, uh, I don't know, feel personally attacked, but basically I'm not gonna use this anymore. I don't like it, sorry. Okay, so now that I have got my setup bonnet on the machine, I am casting on straight with craft nook. So normally when I'm cranking a sock, I will start with waste yarn, but I'm just going ahead and starting immediately with the working yarn. In this case, that's craft nook because what I'm doing right now is checking my gauge and I need to determine what the width of this tube is that I am cranking and then also how many rows per inch. If I just put the yarn on the machine and moved forward with cranking my sock without checking gauge, the chances of me having a sock that will not fit are incredibly high. So I'm just checking gauge. It's not that uh, time consuming. I knit basically anywhere from 75 
to 100 rows and then I take that off the machine and I measure the width and the rows per inch and then I use the Dean and Beans uh, sock pattern formula that is free on their website to determine how many rows I need to crank for the foot in, e in order for that sock to fit my accurate foot measurement. So as you'll see later, I mess up my calculations. Math is not my forte, um, but uh, apparently counting isn't either. So I messed up the formula. It's, it's really user friendly and hard to mess up, so I don't really know what happened. But um, as you'll see later, I do not crank the correct amount of rows. So this is definitely a testament not only to the importance of taking the time to check your gauge, but also to the importance of making sure you do the math correctly after you've checked the gauge. So I'm taking it off the machine and I'll show you how I measure it next. Okay, so to measure the width, you're gonna put it on a flat surface. And again, this is another reason I am perfectly happy just using a cardboard box as my machine cover because I can just put it back on my machine to have a flat working surface whenever I need it. So I'm placing my ruler over the width of my tube to measure the width and um, I'm getting three and a half inches. I'm shooting for three and three quarters inches. So this is just a little bit too narrow. So what I'm going to do is try another gauge swatch on a larger cylinder. So what I'm doing now is replacing the cylinder. First you unscrew it and then you screw in the new cylinder and you transfer the needles. And as you can hopefully see me doing here, you kind of have to go one by one. Once you have some needles in, you can pull them forward a little bit and that will make the spring that holds them around your cylinder have enough give for you to insert the next needle. So you just do that one by one around the full circumference of the cylinder and you can crank a quarter turn or half a turn um, once you get far enough to get the working needles in front of you and you can put them in the slots in front of you instead of having to kind of bend your arms in funny ways uh, to get these needles in. Uh, on, on the back side of the cylinder, for instance, that would be more difficult than just sticking them here in the front. So once you have your needles in the new cylinder all set up, you can begin uh, moving forward with your cranking process. So I have this new cylinder installed and what I'm doing now is winding the yarn from my gauge swatch back onto the cone with the rest of the yarn. I didn't cut the yarn at all, so it's all still connected. And once that is wound back on the cone, I will then repeat the process and knit another 75 to 100 rows on the newly installed cylinder. The first one was I think a 56 or 54 cylinder and now I'm gonna try it on a 64 needle cylinder. So I have a pretty good idea that this is going to give me the width I want. This is just kind of something that, I don't know, I have in my toolbox now. I'm, I'm definitely uh, not an expert with sock cranking, but I know that by switching from a 50 some needle cylinder to a 64 needle cylinder at the tension I had it on, that's going to give me the extra quarter inch of width that I'm looking for. So I'm just quickly going to crank several rows. Again, 75 to 100 I think is the sweet spot and then I'll take it off my machine and measure. Since I immediately measured the width on my last swatch and knew right away that it was not going to be the width I needed, I didn't even bother uh, calculating the row gauge, but as you'll see in a minute for this swatch, it is the width I need, so then I move on and measure the row gauge. And I just lay my ruler on the swatch and I count however many stitches are in one row or one column over the course of four inches. So I'm winding this back on the cone and then I'm gonna go to my pattern and calculate how many rows I need for the foot, which again, um, 
I miscalculated, so I did it wrong. Basically, I know now that I needed 54 rows with my gauge in order to crank a sock that fits my foot. Now, with the pattern that Dean and Bean provides, again, for free on their website, I always add five rows to the foot. This helps uh, the fit, in my opinion. Other than that, I follow the formula to a T, but whether I'm making socks for myself or someone else, I always add five rows. For whatever reason, it just seems like the formula plus five rows is the sweet spot. So I, anyway, I thought that I did the math correctly and with the formula they provide, I thought that I would need to crank 74 rows, meaning 79 rows for the foot. And when I got to that number, I thought, hmm, that's that's kind of a lot of rows. That's more rows than I normally do. But I thought, oh, it just must be the tension I have. It just must be my gauge on this particular day. Who am I to question the math of this formula? And uh, turns out I should have questioned it because instead of subtracting two figures of 20, I subtracted only one. So. I really should have cranked 54 rows, which with my adjustment of five rows, 59 rows, which is drastically different than 79 rows, especially if you're trying to make a fitted sock for your foot. So on this particular day, when I was cranking Craft Nook and Game Cabinet, I did not catch this error <laughs> until I had fully cranked a pair of Craft Nook socks and halfway cranked a pair of game cabinet socks. So basically what that means is I cranked two socks in Craft Nook and I cranked one sock of game cabinet. Thankfully, I did not sew the toes closed on any of those three individual socks I made, so it was not too much of a big deal to have to frog them because I just put the cone back on my drill and I frogged it using the drill so it went by fast. Uh, it was kind of sad, but it's okay. It's, it's life goes on. It's, it's not life or death here. But yes, the attempt of Craft Nook and Game Cabinet Socks that I went through on this day was just not gonna work, it didn't work. So after I frogged these, I put these on hold and I didn't revisit them until today. Today um, is Tuesday, September 5th when I'm recording this and I finally had the strength to revisit this attempt and let's see how it goes. Hi, okay, so here I am. I am like a week past when I filmed my original attempt at cranking up cabin socks and I am pleased to report that I have two pairs of cabin socks complete. So I was able to sit at my machine today and crank out a pair of Craft Nook socks so these are really fun uh, orange, yellow, green, cream, really autumnal. That's such a fun word to say. So I have my Craft Nook socks. They are the correct length this time. Um, much better than having 20 extra rows. That just simply won't do. And then I have my complete pair of game cabinet socks. So there's a lot going on with the game cabinet socks. There's a lot of cream and blush, but there's also blues and greens. And the way the blues and greens kind of stick together is really pretty. So they kind of almost make micro stripes, but not quite. But if you look at the flashes of where the blue and green sit, they kind of stay together and then the rest of the sock is that blush and cream. So it almost makes like a grayish pink uh, finished item. So I really like how Game Cabinet cranked up. So I have two pairs complete and um, I didn't know this when I first 
started cranking these socks because again, I tried to first crank them last week or maybe even the week before, I, mean, I don't remember, but I tried to crank them before I sat down and made my list of September goals. And one of my September goals is to crank cabin yarn into socks so I can wear these in Ireland. So I am working towards my September goal. These count towards that. I'm certainly not done cranking cabin yarn into socks, but two pairs is not too shabby. Now, another thing that I cranked today um, that I didn't expect to crank, but I was working with Craft Nook and um, I had a little bit left over. So I decided I would make another pumpkin. So I did crank another pumpkin. I cranked this just like my other pumpkin. I cranked 60 rows on my 64 needle cylinder. I filled it with polyfill and I added a cinnamon stick on top. I love this pumpkin even more than I love the pumpkin I made in my um, pumpkin cranking video a few weeks ago. This is the that pumpkin. So this is the first pumpkin I cranked on my sock machine and they do not look identical, surely, but they are made identically pretty much. Um, even though this one is much bigger and this one is smaller, um, which you can tell when I hold them at the same distance, you can see this one is bigger. Um, they have the same amount of rows that they're knit. The difference is I filled this one way, way more full with polyfill. I weighed this, this weighs 23 grams, and this one weighs 38 grams. So um, accounting for, you know, negligible differences in the weight of the cinnamon sticks and the, please focus on the pumpkins, and the hot glue globs I put on here. Basically 15 grams difference of polyfill between these two pumpkins. And you can kind of see this one is uh, kind of, more full and is causing the stitches to stretch a little bit. I'm so sorry it's having issues focusing. What a nightmare to have to look at. Okay, so um, you can see the stitches are a little bit more stretched out on this pumpkin that is fuller and the stitches on this pumpkin are not as stretched. So this one definitely is not as full. This one is very firm because it's very full of polyfill. So just made a quick little pumpkin because I already had the machine set up and I had just a little bit left of craft nook. So why not? So that turned out great. So today I am coming at you with a completed pumpkin, which is way better, I think, than the last pumpkin I made. So just onward and upward with everything we do. And then two pairs of socks. So there you go. Maybe I'll make this my thumbnail. Um, yeah. So there's my two pairs of cabin socks. I think maybe the next pair of cabin socks I'll use cabin walls because I really want to see how that works up. But yeah, there you go. Some, some successful sock cranking. Even though it took longer than I initially planned on, it's done now and I have two new pairs of wearable socks. So there you go. Um, that's all for today's video. So thanks for watching, whether you are a longtime subscriber or you're new here, I'm really thankful that you took the time out of your day to watch me uh, poke around and uh, mess up some socks and then complete some socks. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did like it, you can give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you don't already and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified of my next upload. And last but not least, head over to Instagram and follow me at Rachel is Knitting if you don't already. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time.